So I'm working on this 2011 Dodge Caliber and it had a bunch of codes saying that there was a problem with the throttle. There's a what it was at P here's the codes I'll just show you. So you have P0 2110, P0 2118, P0 2112 and uh, P0 2101. So those are the codes. Here's what the problem was. Uh, it was really dirty before. So let's go to the bench and let's uh, play with this thing. So this throttle body, it was really dirty. It had a bunch of debris and junk in it. Um, it's been into the dealership three or four times, I think, by this owner and the last owner. You can tell that this plug had been undone several times. And, and the little tube that goes to this from the air filter housing so there's a little tab on it and the wire harness fits in there and you, it's got a little pine tree type thing that you push in and it's just been ravaged so anyway when I've been uh, cleaning this I've noticed you hear that extra little clickiness and now it's stuck it will not open unless you push really hard but basically, these work a lot like a servo for a remote control plane or something. Like this is a servo from a little remote control helicopter. This happens to be an E-Flight off of a Blade 400. And see, it goes to there and gets stuck. And then won't move pat, and then it skips right there. So little gears are jacked up. That's why I never buy any more Blade 400s. I had three of them because I thought it was me. I learned on them. But same thing. It's just crappy quality stuff. And here it's just crunchy as crunchy. A bunch of play right there. And then it just gets stuck. So yeah, this this belongs nowhere in this vehicle. Yeah, there we're stuck again. This belongs nowhere in this vehicle. That's the problem. So you go to find one aftermarket, and I'm not finding anything. You got to get it through the dealership, which means you go through the same process, same manufacturer. They do updates a lot with Chevrolet. So I have this pulled up here because it goes clear the crap down there at the bottom of this Ram Horton intake. Look at all the plastic on this thing. It's amazing. I never thought when I was younger that I'd ever see plastic intake manifolds, plastic valve covers, plastic coolant thing. I just never thought I'd see the day. Nor did I think I'd see that we'd have, that we'd trust these things. <laughs> I mean, a cable, you can inspect it physically. You can go through it. You can make sure that it's good. You can replace them easy enough. Anyway. So with this little guy, this, it's stuck right now. It's just, oh, what a piece of junk. So much play. I can't even get it to work even for a little bit. All right, well, it's in the vehicle or out of the vehicle. I know that it's got the forced limit thing. You guys know what the forced limit thing is? See that little flashing thing? That's your, uh, throttle body basically the butterfly that turns this way. That's not helpful is it? Basically the throttle body is these two little things there and then the little lightning thing is electronically controlled uh, throttle plate So that's what we're dealing with So I read the codes and I get the P2112 and the P2110 and they're both active so we'll get out of there I said, erase the codes. We're using a Maxi DOS uh, 780, I think it is. Okay, ignition on, engine stopped, that's correct. Everything's going to be lost. Oh no, it's all lost. Erase codes command sent. We click OK. Turn the ignition off. Click OK. I just hit the OK thing, that's all. We turn the ignition to the on position, click OK, read codes, and they are right back. Bam. 
a throttle body is toast. What's interesting is that throttle body, there's so many benefits to fly by wire, floating quotation marks, one handed. Uh, the fly by wire system, it replaces your idle air control motor, it replaces your throttle body, it replaces your cruise control stuff. Um, it replaces your uh, throttle position sensor. I mean, in terms of creative destruction, you know, like the computer and word processor destroying the typewriter, um, it does a lot that way. But then you have to have an extra sensor down here, and then you get all this stuff that, I mean, it used to be you could be under the hood and pull the throttle cable and perform tests under the hood. Nowadays, if you want to do that, you have to have an expensive scanner and some of them allow you to do that you know by actuating it and some don't most don't most vehicles that's not supported so you have to have somebody else in the in the car to do that do i like them hell no i don't like them are they awesome yeah they're awesome there's great technology <clears throat> but on a cheapskate car like this dodge caliber they're you know it's like they don't really pay for a good enough throttle body to make it worth your while you'd be better off having throttle cables in my opinion. So this is the old one, this is the new one. The new ones are about 300 bucks. So the old one, as I showed before, it's stuck and then it goes. And it just gets stuck at random. And then the new one is just really smooth. Uh, there's significant resistance. You can feel the gearing besides the spring. So it's got just a little bit of close off to that. That one's just kind of loose. You can hear the difference. You can really feel it, but how do you demonstrate that on camera? Anyway, we're going to put the new one in. So I've gone through and cleared all the codes. You see the little uh, throttle thing come on there. Start the car and it goes off. And the check engine light came right back on, even though everything was working properly if I put it into neutral. So I'm in neutral. You can see I can rev it just fine, put it in drive, everything's fine, take off, and you can get up to speed okay. So the car's working now, I didn't have to program the new throttle body, I didn't have to reset anything, um, but the check engine light came on because there's two different places on the computer under the ECU stuff, one's got a, there's a computer just for the transmission and one for the engine. And so I had to go into each of those uh, menus and clear both of them because the throttle position affects the transmission and so it set codes for both sides. But we're in good shape now. The person that owns this car, she used to have a red V8 Camaro and she traded it in for this. Ouch. So I've never opened one of these up before, but I know they're based on the same principle that these are pretty much. And I have rebuilt these. They're a lot more like a watch, more intricate. But as I look at this, I can see that this is uh, kind of pressed on over the top or, you know, folded over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little cutter and just cut around the outside and get that to come off. Now I'm going to take a look inside and see if I can see uh, what's making it hang up, if it's something in the gears, because that's kind of the way it feels. Sure, there's a big spring in there because this sure springs back. I don't know if the spring's going to be in this cap. Like a, this has got a little freeze plug in it, just like it's a little carburetor from a lawnmower or something. Anyway, let's get in. For the objective to have these unserviceable and bar access, it wasn't very hard to cut around the perimeter of that as I did. I left this together to hinge on, but that's all there is. To open the door. I guess I could turn this sideways. Pull it off the rest of the way. So that's all you have there. I expected to see this gear stripped or something, but it doesn't appear to be. Looks like that's able to freewheel. I wonder if there's just one gear in there that's bad. I don't see any. It seems to move pretty freely. So what gives? You see that's the motor. The motor's here. And then this is uh, some of the circuitry. And I see a spiral circuit set here, so that's probably something to do with the throttle position sensor and angle sensor or whatever for it. So this has to have a gear on the inside of here. 
I bet that's probably where the fault is. These look fine. It's all greasy and goobered up. I don't see anything real obvious. Ah, found it. It's the interface of that gear. You can see where the teeth are stripped right there. You can't see it real good now, but you can see it's right there. There's a flat spot where the gears have been stripped. So probably there was ice or something and it stripped initially because it always did it in the down position. So realistically the only problem with this is just that plastic gear. You should be able to pull these out, replace that plastic gear with a new one, and then you'd be back in business. Of course the the responsibility of this is so high that they don't want to have you doing that because there's a risk that if you do it wrong that uh, General or Chrysler could be sued. So but that's the problem. That's a that's a the fault that we have there. That's the fault in our stars right there. Fascinating. It's kind of fun to see. Now you know. I'm going to tear it down the rest of the way just for kicks and giggles, because why not? I wiped the grease off of that with a Q-tip, so it left some of the Q-tip behind. But it's very easy to see now that those teeth are missing. What's interesting is this turned freely, but once I grab hold of the throttle and hold it in the open position where it has gears, it doesn't turn freely anymore. It only turns freely when it gets to those stripped gears where there's no teeth. No teeth, no hookup. So it should never turn freely like that. Once you move this, it engages and then it, it binds. It's geared down really low so it moves that throttle plate just a little bit. Wow. So either this got full of ice or dirt. It's really dirty as you saw in the pictures. I don't think that's enough to strip the gear. But something sure stripped up. Let's pull these off and take a look. And what's this? Uh, right, looks like you gotta take this all off at the same time. Looks like they are connected. So I'm gonna do that next. T20 is a tight fit. I don't think the hammer drill is necessary because the direction that this one hits in doesn't work like an impact, it works like a hammer. Got so many drills now, it's hard to. Remember what's what. Yeah, let's open it up like a hinge. This thing's toast anyway. So there's your gear. Doesn't want to come off either. But it's a lot easier to see the strip teeth on it. It's very evident. So that's the gear that moves with the throttle plate. Uh, this is the motor. I just think this just relays power. I think the solder connection here and here is keeping this plate from coming off. But I'm satisfied with the diagnosis and what's going on inside of here. It's not nearly as complicated as you would think that it is. We've got this feedback mechanism. This lets you know what position you're at in accordance with these three marks here. I think these are magnetic. And as those turn, those magnets send a signal to these different uh, pieces, or connects the pieces actually, to give a certain reading. It's probably somewhat square waveform, you know, like step stair pattern. Anyway, that's what's in a fly-by wire system. I don't see why the heck they're so expensive. They're very simple. They're like a wiper motor or something, plus whatever this is that doesn't seem to be terribly involved. And apparently they're not made that great because the gearing is just a little plastic junk gear. But that's what you get. 
So here's something fun. You have system tests. And for the ECU, for the body control module, the system test is awesome. You got the injector kill test. You can kill the injectors because they're so hard to get to to unplug, I guess. I don't know. Most of the Chrysler vehicles are. Engine must be running at an operating temperature. So you say, okay, I'm not going to mess with that today. But you basically can kill the injector. So ETC throttle follower test. So in order to form this test, the engine must not be running. To use this test, press the throttle pedal and the ETC should follow. Electronically, th electronic throttle control should follow. Okay, great. So does this bypass the P2110? I don't know. When I push the throttle down, it always stays at 9% because that's what it gets when it's in the safe mode, that little lightning mode. So I just, uh, I'm not touching the throttle, it's all the way up. And it's still wiggling. I'm not touching anything. You see the numbers are pretty much the same. So I'm going to stomp it to the floor. Bam! I'm holding it on the floor. Our volts go to 4 and 2 on the app 1 and app 2. They let go. They go 0, 2 and 4, 0, 2 and 4. So throttle position sensor, it doesn't change, because guess what? This doesn't change. To the floor, up, to the floor, up, to the floor, up. 